What's up, everybody? I, uh, I've been away for a little while, I know, and uh, partially because um, I've been in the process of moving and uh, partially because I've been building out a little studio, as, as you can see here. Um, <laughs> it's not done yet, but I think it's a great little addition uh, to the channel. And it just makes it so much easier to actually create content and actually be able to get you guys, um, I think, a higher quality of content. So hope you guys like it. It's still in the process of being uh, finished. There's some things I still want to do. But if you guys have any suggestions for me, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Now, today, what we're going to be doing specifically, though, is we're going to be using a mobile app called Beamer Code. And I'm really excited about this because Beamer Code is basically something I've been wanting for years and just didn't know it existed. It is a application that lets you code into your BMW different options that are actually from the factory either turned on or off based on the market that it was being sold in. So for example, um, you could turn on um, you know, your, your rear tail lights, which is what we're gonna do, into driving time lights. So you have front driving lights, which is great for safety. Um, and actually, I think it looks pretty good. And I wanted the same thing for the rear, especially because I've been actually rear-ended twice in one year, uh, cars that I don't own anymore. But um, I think a big part of that was because I wasn't that visible to them. So by having rear lights that are on, and not brake light on, but like marker light on, I think that just ups the visibility and just gives me a little bit of a better chance of not getting rear-ended. But also, I think it looks cool. So that's the one thing we're gonna focus on coding today. But the process of coding this is the same if you wanted to do anything else, like turn off that terrible bonging of the seatbelt sound when you don't put on your seatbelt, or um, you know, getting rid of that disclaimer at the beginning when you start up your car and it pops up on your iDrive and it's just a little bit annoying, you have to hit the button to, to get it out of the way. Those kinds of things are all possible. So it's really exciting. You could spend a lot of time really going through this and uh, customizing the car to your preferences which is kind of cool. I wish I knew about this years ago, <laughs> but that's okay, never too late uh, to make it yours. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm excited, let's get to it. All right, guys, so the first thing you're gonna need in order to do this is uh, one of these guys. And uh, this is just an OBD2 reader. Um, it is a Bluetooth, and this one is called a uh, VPeak. Um, and uh, I got this off of Amazon. I think it was like just over 30 bucks, maybe $33, something like that. So um, this just simply plugs in to your OBD port and that allows you the ability to communicate with the car which is what you need. So I'm gonna put a link in the description down below for this, and you guys can pick this one up. Actually, I think Beamer Code has this one as one of the suggested ones you can buy, but you could also um, pitch, uh, pick up some other ones that are maybe a little cheaper. I just wanna tell you to be careful though, because if you go with one that's not recommended, um, there could be some problems with it, like, like actually uh, maintaining connection before you finish coding or something like that. And uh, that would be really bad if you went to code something, it didn't finish, it could cause all kinds of challenges. So let's just make sure that um, you know that up front. Secondly, um, I do get a lot of questions around, will coding actually um, affect my warranty? The answer to that is no. I mean, the things that we're doing in the car, it's, it's, not, it's nothing that we're um, breaking or changing to the point where you can't actually put it back to the way it was the day you got it. Um, these are just options that you get to change. It's just that now you have, you actually know you can change them and uh, you can fine tune it to your preference. So don't be afraid. You should be fine on all that. So let's go ahead and plug this guy in. All right. So once you've plugged that in, you should see a blue blinking light on this particular one. That just tells you that it's actually communicating with the car. 
The next thing you gotta do is you have to push it um, or turn it on into the power on mode. Um, and if at all possible, turn off all your accessories because you don't want it losing battery to anything else that's unneeded. So I turn off as much as I can. And at that point, you wanna go into the Beamer Code app itself. Um, and then you want to launch the app, Beamer Code, right? Um, and connect. Now, it's gonna ask you from a list, what, uh, what kind of car are you in? Uh, in this particular case, we are in an M2. Uh, notice that it kind of already knew that, so we are starting to connect in now. Okay, so now what it's doing is it's identifying the control modules one at a time. And this process, unfortunately, does take a little bit of time. For me, I find it takes about uh, one to two minutes depending on, um, well, really depending on the speed of my phone, to be honest. Um, but it, that's okay, you just gotta be a little patient. And uh, once it connects, you'll find that it's actually gonna have all the specific categories of options that you can change and adjust. Okay, great. So now we've actually made it into all of the control units. And in this particular car, because it is a 2020, there's a ton of them. Um, but the one that we want to specifically focus in on is actually going to be called the rear electronic module. And I'm going to click into that. Now, it's going to do another, um, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so to log into that particular module. And that's because it's actually like tapping into that part of where the computer is or the um, um, any of the data for that uh, particular option lies. So, so it takes a little bit of time, but that's okay. Now um, it's already half done. Once we get into this part, you're gonna see that it's only gonna show us things that we can manipulate for this module. And these are, this is the part where you get to decide what gets coded and what doesn't. Um, <clears throat> one thing to also note is throughout all these options that we're about to see, everything can be put exactly back to the way it was before you did anything. Because every time you make a change in Beamer code, it actually creates a backup, which you can see at the bottom right-hand corner. And if you click on that and it'll show you all your backups, you just click on the date of the backup that you last had that you felt was when the car was the way you wanted it to be, whether it was from the day that you picked it up and the first day you did any coding, or it could be many different iterations from then, but that's okay, it's up to you. So no fear on this, you're not gonna break anything. Now, as you can see here, we have a ton of different options that we could play with here. And if you really wanted to go through each one of these things, and this is just one module, remember, I mean, you could spend hours fine tuning stuff. But for the purposes of this tutorial, all I wanna do is focus in on making my tail lights into daytime running lights. And so right here, there's a section called daytime running lights, and there's daytime running lights, rear lights, outer part, and there's daytime running lights, inner part. Now, depending on the car you have, you'll wanna choose one versus the other. Um, like usually I find one of them is the actual brake light bulbs. You don't typically wanna use those because um, they're gonna be brighter and I don't think they brighten extra when you push on the brakes. But um, it just depends on the car really. You're just gonna have to play with it a little bit. In this particular car, um, the outer lights are the ones we want. And so, as you can see here, I've actually already gone ahead and coded this by clicking the active. If I wanted to deactivate them, I just click on not active. And then, but I'm gonna put it back to active because I don't wanna change it. But when I go back, you'll see at the top right corner here, there's a section that says code. All you gotta do right there is click that button and it takes about five seconds and it actually goes through and codes and tells you everything's good or if there's any issues, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it's gonna say it's good. At least my experiences with Beamer code, it's been flawless. So uh, I don't worry about it at all. But now that I've coded that, um, there's other options here. I can go through each one of these individually and code those as well. Um, and if I don't like what I did, again, I could just go to the backups. You probably also notice that there's a little section at the bottom here called expert mode. I would stay away from that unless you really know what you're doing. Um, that's really more for um, you know people who understand uh, the different naming conventions um, of like the deeper systems. They could really get lost. So I would say 
give it a little time before you start getting a little crazy with that. But for the basic stuff, you can code just like that. And then all you want to do to finish is go back to the main um, menu, which is this here, and then just click disconnect. And once you've done that, um, you're good to go. You can pull out the dongle, you can leave it in if you want. I usually pull it out and uh, check to see what you've done with your work. So let's give it a look and uh, see if we actually accomplished anything. All right, let's uh, start this guy up. And let's see what we're working with. So you can see we got the halos on, so that's good. So there you go, guys. Um, I think mission accomplished on that one. And, uh, you know, pretty easy thing to do. I don't think that, um, you know, you need to be an expert to start coding, but I do think you should research exactly the things that you want to do to your vehicle before you start messing around with it. Also, a couple more notes. Make sure that before you go ahead and you start playing with stuff, make sure that your battery level is charged enough so that you don't have any electrical issues during coding because trust me, that is the last thing you wanna deal with. Um, and on top of that, you also wanna make sure that, um, you know, the vehicle itself, like, you know, you're not going too crazy or doing anything illegal. Make sure you follow the laws of your area. Um, you know, I don't want you guys getting in trouble for something that, you know, you shouldn't do, like turning your high beams on all the time or something like that, right? Um, but also on the battery charger part, if you don't have um, a very strong battery, put it on a charger. Put it on, put it on, um, you know, a, uh, a Tinder charger or something that is going to allow the battery to stay fully lit as long as possible before you start coding, uh, just to be safe. But other than that, I think it's been it's been great. So, um, guys, I hope you've gotten some value out of this, and uh, you know, feel free to leave me. Um, any comments or questions in the comment section down below and uh, looking forward to doing more stuff with Beamer Code. Thanks guys.